Okay, guys, so I've had to, I've been having this discussion with a couple of my friends, and they're really worried about mileage and how to get there and all that, uh, or range, I should say, with an EV. So um, I came up with, I mean, there's several different things I could do. Um, one of the things we talked about was, well, they used to take a trip down to Kingsville every one, every so often to see their daughter when she's in college down there. Um, that's about 500 miles. And so they're kind of like, well, I need to go be able to go 500 miles. Uh, their, their daughter's graduated and she's working, so they're not going to make very many trips down to Kingsville. And they're kind of the type of, if they're going somewhere that far, maybe a little bit further than that, but if it's, if it's going to take more than a day to drive there, they'd probably fly anyway. So that kind of range is not really necessary. But the other thing they do from time to time is go to uh, Chinatown down in Houston or Bel Air. Um, so I was thinking like, well, I could quite possibly do that trip. Now, can I do that in one charge? No, I can't. That's, that's just a little too far. But there's plenty of charge. I have a Tesla. There's plenty of chargers along the way. So finding a place to charge up and, and do the round trip is not a problem whatsoever. So the purpose of this trip is to, first of all, show that I can do it, which I know I can do it, but demonstration of actual results always help. Now, this trip really is a reconnaissance trip to make sure I already think I know where I want to stop but I'd like to make sure that I can do that without any question. So that's, that's the purpose of this trip is to go out, make sure that the place, that, so I'm looking at the, uh, there's a supercharger in, in uh, Katy. I assume it's attached to HEB. And uh, coming back, there's a supercharger at Bucky's in Bastrop. So those would be my two stops. So, I mean, it, 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 it's just a little too far with me charging to 81% to make it from home to there. Well, even just going one way, but you can't just go there and then somewhere you have to charge up. So it's, it's a little bit easier to say I'm going to charge up just before getting to Houston. That makes that makes sure I have energy to drive around wherever I want to drive, no problem. And then on the way back home, stopping in Bastrop gives me just the charge I need to make it the rest of the way home. So anyway, that's where I'm going with all that. And we'll see how that works out. Okay guys, it's Ray with Opa Ray. Today I'm going to make a little trip. Uh, <laughs> Houston's three hours away. Anyway, so I'm going to make a little trip to Bel Air and back. Um, I have some friends and they, they're going like, oh, I have to be able to go X amount of distance uh, and that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of going like, well, um, that's not the way an EV really works. I mean, you can go the distance, don't get me wrong. But you usually plan for a charging stop somewhere along the way if it's far enough out. So Houston is just on the, on the outside of 80% uh, range. And in fact, uh, when I put in the destination, te the Tesla came back and said, well, you know, uh, you're going to stop in Columbus to charge up. Now I'm going to stop in Columbus with, uh, what, 28%. So if I were to push it, I probably could. Um, my temptation actually is to go to Katy. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But the real bottom line is, you know, just because you're gonna stop somewhere for 10, 15 minutes, doesn't mean that it's uh, uh, dramatic. So anyway, that's what this trip, this trip is just about showing that it can be done and I just want to uh, try it out and make sure I do it before I 
have them do it. Anyway, this will be fun. It'll be it'll be a morning, but it'll be uh, interesting. We'll still I'll update you as we go along. Thanks. Bye. Okay, here we are at Bucky's in Bastrop. Been driving for an hour 21, uh, 68 miles. So we take a little natural break and be right back. Okay, guys, here I am at the HB and KD. Uh, these, these, this is version two superchargers. So not great, but you know what? I, I, what's what's the real difference? I mean, 150, 250. So um, to boil it down, from my viewpoint, the 150 at least you're not charging it quite as hard, so you, you're uh, saving your battery life to some extent. Anyway, whatever, it's it's a it's a good place to be, so it's okay. So so far, I've covered 173 miles. I've used 45 kilowatt hours, and I'm averaging 259 watt hours per mile which makes sense since the speed limit on most of Texas 71 is 75. Um, and I'm going just uh, right at 75. So we're doing pretty good. Let me explore and I'll, I'll uh, try and narrow down exactly where I'm going. Okay, so the place I was looking for down Bel Air, uh, I couldn't find it. I mean, I was on Bel Air, Bel Air Boulevard, I believe it is. In, in Bel Air, the city of Bel Air. The place I think I was looking for, I saw a star, store back there, but it wasn't the store I was looking for. But quite possibly, maybe they've been bought out or renamed or whatever. So that's possible. But the basic premise of the trip still works. Okay guys, welcome to Bastrop and Bucky's and a version 3 supercharger. So we're charging up, I'm uh, charging right now at 225 kilowatts and wow, 8 minutes to continue my trip. But uh, I think I'll go a bit higher than that. So anyway, uh, so far this trip has been 322 miles, used 87 kilowatts. I'm averaging 270 watt hours per mile. And so let me give you a little PSA now, uh, part here. So there, as I was coming up past Columbus, um, I noticed that I dipped down to 9% arrival. So in, in the Tesla, it tells you how much you should arrive with. Um, I think most cars will give you some clue. Um, if it doesn't, I, mean, I hate to make you think about it a whole lot. It's nice that the car monitors all of it for you. Anyway, so it, I noticed it dipped down to 9% arrival in Bastrop. You're like, uh. And then uh, eventually it dipped down to 8%. And I'm going like, well, maybe I need to do something. Or slow down a little bit. And then I noticed it dripped down to 7 um, Of course, it's over a period of like 10, 15 miles. So... That means I'm using up a little too much energy too fast. Or I'm using up energy too fast. So I slow down, I slow down about five miles per hour. Um, yeah, it's, it's not so much fun to go just slightly slower. But once I did, then then the percent drop stabilized. And so I arrived at 8%. It said I was gonna arrive at 8%, I arrived at 8%. So slowing down sometimes helps a lot. And, and I mean, it's right around the speed limit, so it's not like you're going really slow. I've, I've done that before, I've gone really slow, and that was not even fun. So anyway, uh, that's that PSA for those of you who don't, I mean, most people, if you've driven long enough, you know. If you've driven the EV long enough, you'll, you'll know that that's, that's what you do. So PSA two, and this one may be somewhat political to some people, but whatever. So, when you're driving on the highway, don't tailgate. So coming out of Katy, there was a big traffic jam. I'm like, oh, it's construction. That's gonna be bad. No, what it was was 
somebody in a nice car decided it'd be cool to follow a Ford F-150, F-250, whatever it was, closely. So I'm guessing somebody cut in front of the F F-150 or some did something to force him to slow down. And the, the person driving the lovely ice car, well, uh, I guess they have a crushed radiator now. I mean, it didn't look like it was really bad, but you know, if you're too close and you can't control your speed, you're going to get banged. And when you get banged in a construction area where it's all blocked off into two lanes, you can only go those two lanes, the cops aren't gonna get there for a while. Half the world exiting Houston going west is behind you and everybody's mad. Take a breath, calm down, slow down, try to arrive safe and try not to block Opa Ray from getting to his destination. Anyway, drive safe. Thank you. Okay, home again, home again, jiggity jog. 28% uh, battery left. So this uh, Lago Vista, the Bel Air trip was 400 miles, took 109 kilowatt hours, and averaged 272 watt hours per mile. So, and let's see, I left at uh, around 540. It's now two o'clock. So six, four, that's about six hours. That sounds about right. Okay, just a little bit extra for the charging stops. There you go. So, uh, let me get let me get the car in, parked, and get it charging, and we'll uh, add up the numbers. Okay, so the final results for our trip. 400 miles covered, 117 kilowatts used, the total cost of energy was $28.89. I made two charging stops, one at the, uh, the HEB and Katy, and one at the Bucky's and Bastrop, and I took two, two other breaks. So that was the total trip. The trip did take about eight hours. Okay, to summarize this trip, this trip was to demonstrate driving from a town to another town, taking the better part of a day, showing that you can do it, um, and showing how to plan, plan for it. Well, I didn't show it to you in the video. I just basically said, yeah, I put in the destination in, te in the Tesla map and it computes everything. And uh, I followed most of it, but there's some things I already know, I already know where I'm going in Houston, at least this part of it. So I mean, I'm not following the map. I, I, I know better, but, and, and there's other things like it, it was suggesting going a different way. And I, I didn't, I was stuck with using the I 10 and 71. Um, I know it well. And then also when I come out, I can get off of 71, get on to Texas 130, and I can go by and, and uh, I can wave to my my neighbors, my my the my car's Model Y companions. So, you know, just, just for fun. But anyway, the bottom line of this was showing that you can do the trip. I wanted to make sure I knew how to do it and it happened almost exactly the way I expected it to other than I didn't find a store, but showing how the trip works and that worked. So demonstrating how it works, showing it for real is, is the way most people think you can make it, make the difference. I mean, it's, you can talk about it, you can talk to talk about it till you're blue in the face, but until you actually show, here's how it works. It nobody died. It wasn't horribly inconvenient to do it, and so it's not really a big deal. Hopefully, this is getting a little bit closer, and hopefully, if you're watching this, you're looking at it going. Like, Oh, okay, that's not too bad. No, it's not. 
at least not in a Tesla. I mean, other cars you may have to work on a little bit harder, but you can get it done. Okay, good luck.